Assalamu alaikum and hello again. Today we are talking about the first lesson in chapter 1, Types and Components of Computer System. Our lesson is to differentiate between hardware and software. You can find it in your book at page 2. When you hear the term computer, you're likely to think of a device sitting on or under a desk that consists of a number of familiar components. As well as the box containing the processing unit, these might include a keyboard, a mouse, and a screen of some sort. Or you might think of a laptop, where all such components are integrated into a single unit. However, the true definition of a computer system is much broader than either of these. It's possible to have a computer that doesn't have a keyboard, a mouse, or a screen. Millions of such computers exist all over the world. In fact, while desktop and laptop machines are definitely computers, so too are washing machines, utility smart meters, supermarket self-checkouts, and climate control systems in vehicles. All computers have a number of common hardware elements, which are input, output, processing, and storage. Computer systems also consist of software. The term software means the programs that provide a computer with instructions to follow. Operating systems, desktop applications and mobile apps are all examples of software. Input simply means a way for data to enter the computer. Output refers to a means by which data is passed on to the outside world. On a laptop, there is a keyboard for input and a screen for output. On a supermarket self-checkout machine, there is a barcode scanner to input data and a receipt printer, among other output devices. A climate control system uses a temperature sensor for input and relay switches to a heater and an air conditioner as output. We say data is processed when it is manipulated in some way. One process of a self-checkout machine is keeping a running total of the current sale. The climate control system would continually check the target temperature with the actual temperature, making a decision about which devices to turn on or off. A laptop has a processor cable of billions of processes every second. Computers also store data. This includes data currently being operated on, as well as the program instructions themselves. Computers also contain a motherboard, which is a circuit onto which all the other components are added. The processor, memory, input and output devices will be connected to the motherboard. There will also be some type of case, which houses the components and protects them from damage. Additionally, computer systems require power, which might come from the mains or a battery. When choosing a computer system, a number of factors need to be considered. Portability is a measure of how easy a computer is to move around, which is important if you travel a lot. Performance simply means how quickly data can be processed. High-performance computers are used for complex tasks and to play high-resolution games. Storage is important for anyone who wishes to keep a lot of files and programs on their computer. Connectivity is also a factor. What other devices can be connected to the computer? This might include input and output devices, as well as storage media such as USB flash drives and external hard drives. Energy consumption is an important issue when considering mobile devices. A tablet with high energy consumption will drain the battery more quickly. Expansion capability is a question of whether you can increase the amount of memory on a system or replace a processor with a higher performance unit. This is not always possible and depends on space available on the motherboard. Finally, security is an important consideration, especially with so much personal data accessible through one device or another. Innovative solutions such as fingerprint, voice and facial recognition systems are becoming more and more widespread. Now, in this mind map, we can find that the hardware and software, we have the hardware here, software here. Hardware can be touched and handled. Computer equipment include processor, screen, keyboard, and many things else. Also the storage media. Now, about the software cannot be touched. Also consists of computer programs and it is application software, operating software, and so on. You can find this mind map very helpful for you in the next lesson. Now, what is hardware? 
Hardware is the general term of physical components that make a computer system, like keyboard, mouse, monitor, printer, and so on. You can find many hardware equipments in your computer system, even it is external or internal components. So we can say that the hardware is tangible physical components of our computer system. We can feel it or touch it. Also, we can say it is internal and external devices. But about the software, it is general term for the programs that control the computer system. There are two types of software, the application and system software. So you can summarize software by it is programs that control our computer systems, set of instructions that make computer do something, you cannot physically touch the software and it relates to the ideas and instructions for using our physical objects of our computer system. Now, we can find out these internal components which are inside my computer or as PC or laptop. Now, we have this figure in our book at page 6 it's talking about internal computer hardware it is talking about motherboard ram rom video card sound card and the internal hard disk drive the solid state drive now if i want to talk about motherboard here is the motherboard the motherboard is printed circuit board which is found in all computers. It allows the processor and other computer hardware to function and communicate with each other. So it is very important in my system. One of the major functions of typical motherboard is to act like a hub that other computer devices connect to, to make them communicate. A typical motherboard consists of a sheet of non-conductive material, like you see here, such as hard plastic, thin layers of copper or aluminum are printed onto this sheet. These form the circuits between the various components. In addition to circuits, motherboard contains several sockets and slots or to connect the other components. As you see here, this is the motherboard. Now, let's back to our figure. Now, the random access memory, which we refer to as RAM. RAM, or random access memory, is internal chip where data is temporarily stored when running applications. It has this shape as you see you can find these pictures in your book now this memory can be written to and read from while our computer is running okay now we will find out what does this mean since its contents are lost when the power of the computer is turned off it is referred to as volatile or temporary memory RAM stores the data, files, or part of operating system currently in use. This means RAM is not a packing storage. It's not to store data for later use. While I am using the application or the data in my computer, so it is now held in the RAM. But after I turn off my computer, it will be lost. Okay? It will be erased. For this, we are telling you as students, while you are in the practical session, you have to save your work in a repetitive way or after each step, you have to save your work. Why? Because you have to get a copy of this running operation in your hard disk or in your backing storage memory okay so in ram data is stored temporarily memory can be written to and read from ram in general 
is greater than the memory ROM holds anything that needs to be changed because it is running on the time all programs and data being are used on RAM contents lost when the computer is turned off and it is referred to as volatile memory because it will be erased after the computer is turned off now ROM the other type of memory let's zoom on now read only memory which is referred to as ROM this is the shape of our ROM it is a memory used to store information that needs to be permanent so it will be stored in the factory not by us as users it's often used to contain configuration data for the computer system these chips cannot be altered and can only be read from so I can't as a user regular user to change anything in ROM it will not store any of my data or my programs also I cannot change any of the configurations inside this ROM so it will not be customized for me one of the main advantages is that the information stored on ROM chip is not lost even when the power is turned off to the computer they are often referred to as non-volatile memory or permanent so ROM is read-only memory it is to store permanent information this information to let my computer work on to start by the working now used to contain configuration data for the computer chips cannot be altered it's only for read reading from now data not lost when the computer is turned off because it is permanent referred to as non-volatile memory now BIOS is containing contained in my ROM why because ROM contains boot file which makes my computer to start up working now this boot file is referred to as BIOS which is basic input output system now it tells the computer what to do when it first start now also it does the hardware check when computer is turned on then it loads operating system into the RAM BIOS stores date time and system configuration now if I want to compare between RAM and ROM we can just watch this about RAM and ROM computers need to store data without the ability to remember a computer would have no means of accessing instruction number one once instruction number two was underway it would not even be able to store instructions one or two at various stages during program execution data needs to be stored and different types of data require different types of storage this chapter will examine ram rom virtual memory cache memory and flash memory ram stands for random access memory which is also known as main memory ram is used to store programs that are currently running as well as data that is currently in use. Programs and data are loaded from secondary storage into RAM because RAM is much higher speed than secondary storage. Once programs and data are no longer needed in RAM, they can be overwritten. Although RAM is faster than secondary storage, its capacity is usually much smaller. RAM is also volatile, meaning its contents are lost when the computer is shut down. ROM stands for read-only memory, which is a type of memory whose contents can be read but not changed or deleted. Accordingly, ROM usually contains data that is never expected to be changed. It is permanent memory. The main function of ROM is to hold the firmware that boots up the computer. It contains a pointer to the memory location where the operating system is stored. When the computer is turned on, ROM is accessed and the pointer shows the computer where to look in order to finish starting up. Since the operating system is not likely to be moved elsewhere on the disk, it's appropriate to store this pointer in ROM.
Virtual memory is used when a computer requires more RAM than it possesses. Let's say a 6 GB program was required, but only 4 GB of RAM were available. Those 4 GB would be used, and the remaining 2 would be stored on a reserved section of backing storage. This section is called virtual memory, and it behaves like an extension of RAM. Since it is slower than RAM, it would only be used when necessary. Cache memory is a type of RAM that can be accessed more quickly than the rest of RAM. It's usually connected directly to the CPU, but is normally of much smaller capacity than the rest of RAM. Ideally, whole programs would be stored in cache memory, but there's typically not enough space for an entire program. Instead, cache memory is used for either data or instructions that will be accessed repeatedly. Programs can run more quickly when the most commonly needed data is faster to access. This is why caching is used whenever possible. Cache data is volatile and will be lost when the power is lost. Flash memory is increasingly popular in the form of solid state drives, or SSDs, and USB pen drives, which are really called USB flash drives. Each bit of data, which is a single one or zero, is stored in flash memory using a pair of microscopic transistors. The first transistor either holds a charge or does not hold a charge to represent one or zero. The second transistor can read the state of the first transistor. As transistors can be made increasingly smaller, a USB flash drive can contain many billions of them. This means that storage capacity is increasing over time. Flash drives now can typically store many gigabytes of data. Flash drive data is permanent and is not lost if the power is cut. Now let's find out about video card. Video card allows the computer to send the graphical information to a video display device such as a monitor, television or projector. It's usually connects to the motherboard as you see this is the video card inside your computer video cards are usually made up of processing unit memory unit which is usually the ram cooling mechanism which is like in a heat sink since the cards generate much heat this is the cooling mechanism and also connections to display unit monitors the television or to the projector by these parts so these are the connections for the display unit now let's back to our internal devices now the sound card sound card this is a sound card as you see it in the back of your computer you will find some inputs for the mic and also for the speakers or for your headphone these are the inputs for your sound card sound card is an integrated circuit board that provides a computer with the ability to produce sounds these sounds can be heard by the user either through the speakers or the headphones sound cards also allow the user to record sound input from microphone connected to your computer so the microphone as an input and the speakers as the output and to manipulate sounds stored on your disk now sound cards use two basic methods to translate digital data into analog signals now which is needed for speakers we have the mfm synthesis and wavable synthesis now the fm mimics different musical instruments according to built-in formulas, but the wavable synthesis relies on recordings of actual instruments to be produced or to produce sound, okay? Now, we have the internal hard disk drive, which is solid state drive or the HDD. Now, here internal hard disk and solid state hard disk is uh, hdd and the solid state drive is the ssd now this is an example of ssd solid state drive and this is the internal 
HDD. Now we can find out that the SSD is faster than the HDD and we will talk about it later on. These two devices are covered in considerably more depth in later uh, chapters of this book in chapter 3 especially basically hard disk drives HDD are magnetic in nature and are one of the main methods of storing data one of the old methods files like text photos and the music and most of the system application software are stored in this hard disk more modern computers and also tablets use newer storage system that make use of solid state drive technology and are replacing the HDD in many cases. Their function is the same as HDD in faster and larger memory. Okay, now let's find out so what are the internal computer hardware? They are motherboard, RAM, ROM, video card, sound card, and HDD, also SSD. And by this we can finish and end our topic one. See you in the next lesson.